and welcome back. So today we're going to talk about setting up our project here. If you're using a Mac and you've unzipped Godot, you just have to drag it into your applications folder and then you want to go to your applications folder to do this because uh, the maker isn't exactly uh, known right away. So I'm going to right click and choose open so that it will actually let me tell it that yes indeed I want to open it. Uh, and then Godot will open up into a project list. And if this is the first time you've downloaded Godot, you won't have any projects here. I have a whole bunch of them here because I've messed around with a bunch of different things. So to make a new project, go ahead and just choose new project to the right. Um, I try to keep all my Godot projects in one folder, so browse to that folder if you want to do the same. Uh, I keep mine in Godot Engine products or projects. And then you want to create a name for your folder here. So I'm going to call this uh, YouTube Match 3. And then choose Create Folder. And then Create and Edit. And then Godot will launch. So let's talk about the setup of Godot a little bit here, especially if you're coming from Unity. This can be a little, a little different. So on the left hand side here by default we have our file system and then a, an icon version of that file system. In the center we have the main scene viewport but this can change dynamically. This can also turn into its own coding window so that you don't have to use an outside program in order to write your code if you're using GDScript. And then to the right here we have our scene hierarchy and then the inspector. So some of these windows should be pretty familiar to you if you're used to using Unity. Uh, the inspector should be pretty familiar, and the scene window should be pretty familiar, and then Unity also has a file system. One of the things that makes Godot unique, though, is this scene hierarchy. Think of it like uh, a prefab. Everything that you make in Godot is a prefab already, and then when you're creating a level uh, or what you would think of as a scene in Unity, it's just a list of prefabs. So everything that you make in Godot is a scene or a node inside of a scene. Uh, we have the import tab and then also under node we have, um, also down where the inspector is rather, we have the node tab which allows you to change what group a node belongs to and also what signals a node can send out, which is one of the other things that makes Godot really interesting and really fun to play around with is that whole signal system. So we're gonna set up our, our scene here though to work the way we want it to. So first thing I'm gonna do is change from 3D to 2D and that automatically brings me to this window. You probably can't see it very well, but there's this little blue line that defines where Godot thinks the viewport would be. So uh, let's fix that. We're going to go to project settings. I'm going to be focusing this on being something that can be built for mobile. So I'm going to need to think about what my window should be. And let's actually go to the document camera to talk about that. Okay, so I find it's really helpful to break out some graph paper before you start trying to lay out what you want your application or your game to look like because this can really help you visualize where stuff should go and what the space you have really means. The most common aspect ratio of width to height for modern phone displays is 9 by 16. So what that aspect ratio means is that you have a width of 9 of something and a height of 16 of something. So I'm just going to break down here really fast and I'll probably fast forward through most of this uh, to 4, 6, eight, nine, and I'm just going to make a little representation of a 9 by 16 display here, so I'll probably fast forward this. Okay, so Candy Crush uses a grid that is 9 by 9. Uh, I'm going to, or at least it's 9 by 9 by default, they change it in some of their levels. I'm going to be using a grid that's a slightly different size. Since I'm going 9 by 16, I decided having a padding of half a unit on either side would probably be okay um, because that way I don't have my pieces going all the way against the side but I do have a little bit of a margin there. So I'm going to allow my grid to be 8 wide and then when I was playing around with this I thought that giving myself some space down here to have some UI and some power up buttons would be pretty good. Um, so that creates a UI very similar to Candy Crush. So I'm going to be use, leaving a little bit of space down here. 
I'm going to have my grid be 8 tiles wide, and then I'm going to go 10 tiles tall. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And that gives me a, a pretty nice sized grid that I can do a lot of stuff with. Um, you can have this whatever size you want. Uh, this by far isn't something that's standard amongst Match 3 games. Um, for example, Puzzle and Dragons has a 6x6 grid. Puzzle and Dragons also has far less um, things that can happen in the grid. They don't have sinkers. Uh, they don't have as many obstacle tiles as Candy Crush does. So I think it's probably a good idea to use Candy Crush as kind of the main idea behind this. So anyway, like I said, I'm just kind of drawing out what I want this to look like. So I want my bottom of my screen to have maybe a pause button, and then a couple power-up buttons here, maybe two or three. And then the top of my screen, I'm going to just kind of trace this out. I want this to have something that has like a moves or a time counter. Um, a little place here for me to tell if things need to be collected, what needs to be collected, and then maybe a score bar that can be filled in and then at certain points we can instantiate a star so that we can say if we earned between one and three stars on a level. So this is kind of a layout of what I want my game to look like. Now the reason I'm doing this is um, because I need to know in pixel coordinates where I want things to go on my screen. So first of all, if I'm using a reference of 9 by 16, let's say that each of these squares here represents 64 pixels. So that means the actual size of my display needs to be 64 times 9 for the width and 64 times 16 for the height. Now 64 times 9, um, that is 576. And 64 times 16, I think is, is that 1024? Let me check. Okay, so then our screen is going to be 576 width by 1024 tall. Um, we're not going to be using this when we test it, we're going to be using a slightly smaller dimension, but this is good for us to have as a reference. Most modern cell phones have a resolution that's higher than this, some have a resolution that's lower, but this would be a nice kind of median uh, resolution to use. Uh, okay. The other thing we need to find out is where we want our first piece to go. So let's say that we have a piece that goes right here and its x and y coordinates are in its middle. We need to know what that x coordinate is and what that y coordinate is so that we know an x start for the grid and a y start. So x start and y start. Now, if I'm making each of these squares 64, that means that my x start is going to be 64 over. Because I want to have a gap of half a unit, which is 32, and then my x is halfway over again, so my x start is 64. Now, my y start is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 12 units down, and then another 32. So 12 times 60, or yeah, 12 times 64 is 768, and then 768 plus another 32 uh, is going to make it 800 as my y start. So I have an x start, I have a y start, I know that I want my tiles to be 64 by 64. So I have a lot of stuff set up here that I need to in order to actually set up my game itself. So let's go back to Godot. Okay, so here we are back in Godot. Um, now to set up a project, I'm going to go to the Project tab and choose Project Settings. And then the first thing I want to look at down here is under Display. I want to choose Window. I'm also under General here. So General, Display, Window. So I'm going to set up the width to be uh, 576 and my height to be 1024. 
but that's a bit big for testing purposes. So I'm gonna change my test width to be half that, so 288, and my test height to be 512. So I just split this down the middle, half and half. Um, I want it to be resizable. Uh, scrolling down here a bit, I want to emulate a touch screen. Scrolling down a little bit more. Um, I want to change my stretch mode to be 2D. And I want to change my aspect to be keep width. I think width is the most important part. Uh, okay, and now the other thing we want to look at is... Okay, so in rendering, go to quality and choose use pixel snap. That's going to make sure that uh, nothing appears on a half pixel, which is especially important if you're using pixel-based graphics. We're not, but that's important to have turned on. And then, cool, we're good. Uh, oh, one more thing we want to do is still in project settings, we need to go over to input map and we're going to create a new action. So this action I'm going to call UI underscore touch. And this is going to be for uh, if a person clicks or touches on the screen, what I want to happen. So I'm going to add that action, and that gets added down here to the bottom. And now I need to tell uh, Godot exactly what that action is. So I'm going to hit the plus symbol next to it. I want this to be mouse button, and I want it to be left button. So I'm just going to click add. So UI touch is my left button. All right, cool. So I'm going to close that right now. And if you just kind of move your screen around, you'll see it resizes to have this 9 by 16 look to it. So uh, one more thing I want to do today, and that is I want to add the background and a mock-up for both the top and bottom UI. So over here in my scene tree, I'm going to create a new node. So I'm going to click plus, and I'm just going to make a blank node 2D, which is just a regular parent of any other node. It, it's just what I'm going to have to be the root of this scene, and every scene needs to have a root. So node 2D, I'm going to rename this to, let's call it uh, game window. Uh, cool. And now to this game window, I'm going to add a child node, and this is going to be a uh, texture rect. And this is going to be for the background. So I'm going to rename this texture rect background. Uh, all right, cool. Now I need to add some art so that this texture rect has something to actually go with it. So over here in my file system, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this folder art. And I open that up. Now I've included a link to the assets that you can use. So I'm just going to go to those really, really quickly here. So under match three assets, I'm going to choose UI. And there's a uh, two different backgrounds that you can use. I'm just going to pull in background2.png. And while I'm doing this, I'm also going to pull in uh, top UI. And I'm going to pull in bottom UI so that I have these three things. So I can just kind of set up my my scene a little bit here. So, all right, with my texture rect, which I have renamed a background, it needs to have a texture, which is an image that is going to display. So I'll drag my background onto that. And it looks like it automatically resized it to be the right size, so that's good. Okay, sorry about that weird cut there. So now that I have my background, I'm gonna Make sure that my game window is selected, and I'm going to add a new child to it. This is going to be another texture rect, and I'm going to name this, uh, we'll call this top UI. And then I'm going to pull my top UI PNG onto the texture. Okay, sorry about that weird cut again. So now I'm going to make another text rect for my bottom UI, and I'm going to rename this to bottom UI underscore UI and I'm going to make this have the bottom UI texture and uh, now I want this to be down at the bottom of my screen this is I believe it's 96 tall so I'm going to go to my uh, my rect 
and under rect I'm going to go to position I'm going to set the Y position to be 1024 minus 96 which is uh, 928 there we go alright cool and then the last thing I'm going to do with this today is just go ahead and save my scene because right now it says that this scene is unsaved so I'm just going to go up to scene click save scene and to do this I'm going to make a new folder so I'm going to call scenes and save it as game window click save and there we go we've got our board all set up so next time we're going to be taking a look at creating the piece scene and using that to create our basic pieces and then after that we're going to fill the board and continue our logic from there if you have any questions please feel free to ask them in the comments down below you can follow me on twitter or ask me questions there uh, or you can join my discord where i'm chatting pretty much every day so have yourselves a wonderful day.